The Iceman. Archaeologists have made other discoveries that tell us about people living during the New Stone Age. Some tell us about how people lived in different climates, or the average weather conditions of places over a long span of time. In 1991, two German tourists hiking in the snow-capped Alps in Europe found the body of a man. With him were found a stone knife and a small axe with a copper blade. His clothing was made mostly of deer skin to protect him from the cold climate. The food he carried included mushrooms, animal bones, and berries. By looking at the ice man's axe and knife, archaeologists could estimate that the man lived during or after the New Stone Age. How did they know this? The clue was in the axe with the copper blade. Archaeologists have learned from other excavations that copper was widely used during the New Stone Age. To determine the age of the Ice Man even more accurately, scientists used another method called carbon dating. All living things contain the element carbon. Scientists can date things based on what happened to the carbon over time. When scientists used carbon dating, they determined that the Ice Man lived about 5,300 years ago. Review. How do comparing artifacts and using carbon dating help us learn about how early people lived? Draw conclusions. Summarize the lesson. About 3.5 million years ago, Old Stone Age began. About 10,000 years ago, first animals were domesticated, and New Stone Age began. About 5,000 years ago, New Stone Age ended. About 4,500 years ago, people lived in Scarabray. From Scarabray by Oliver Dinray, during the Neolithic period or New Stone Age, farmers and herders arrived on the Orkneys, a group of islands north of Scotland. They built permanent homes using the stones that were found in abundance all over the islands. Two big storms in 1850 and 1924 blew away sand and debris from the remains of the huts, and by 1930, archaeologists had uncovered many dwellings in the original village. The following diagrams show the floor plan of e of one of the houses: hearth, fireplace, corbelling, layering of stones. Dresser, cell, bed, hearth, bed, recesses. Dresser, beehive-shaped cell, hearth, man's bed, woman's bed, recess for personal items. Corbelling. From Mystery of Lost Cow Cave, by Dorothy Henshaw Patton. Visitors to the Lost Cow Cave in France, who want to see the prehistoric cave paintings there, must tour a replica of the cave called Lost Cow Two. Dorothy Henshaw Patton, an author of science books for children, was given special permission to view the original cave for research purposes. Here is a history of the cave's discovery, followed by an excerpt from the author's account of the cave tour. On September twelfth, nineteen forty, four French teenagers made a discovery that would change forever the way modern humans view their prehistoric ancestors. 
A few days earlier, one of the boys had noticed a deep hole in the ground between the roots of a tree. Legend spoke of a secret underground passageway leading to the old manor house of Lascaux that might hold a treasure. The boy told his buddies about his discovery, and on the 12th, they headed for the mysterious hole. Armed with a knife, a homemade oil lamp, and some pieces of rope, after clearing away enough stones and undergrowth to enlarge the entrance, the boys squeezed through the hole and slid down, down, down into the cave below, one by one. At first they saw strange markings on the walls, red spots and black ones and lines of color. Then they hung up the lamp and looked more closely. There, staring out from the walls, were images of deer, horses, and enormous bulls. The amazed boys pledged secrecy to one another. This was to be their special place. The next day they returned and explored further, finding more and more incredible works of art. They could not keep this, this find a secret. It was too exciting and wonderful, so they confided in their schoolteacher, Monsieur Laval, they widened the entrance and the teacher joined their explorations later on trying to explain his feelings monsieur laval said i had literally gone mad curator person in charge of a museum the walls of the cave were covered with beautiful paintings the deep rich colors looked as if they had been applied only days before but monsieur Monsieur Laval knew the art was ancient. He realized the potential importance of such a find. Ever since I first learned of the ancient paintings of Lascaux Cave in France, I have wanted to visit them. Created as long as 17,000 years ago, these images of now extinct wild cattle, wild horses, and other animals fascinated the world. So when I decided to write this book, I was disappointed to learn that the original Lascaux Cave was closed to the public. Dr. Jane Day of the Denver Museum of Natural History, however, told me that a few people were allowed to view the cave for research purposes. I applied for a permit and hoped. A few days later, a letter in French arrived. If I appeared at Lascaux at 4 p.m. on October 22, 1996, it said I would be allowed into the cave. I was thrilled. As my husband and I drove to Lascaux, the peacefulness of the site surrounded by a lovely woodland calmed me. First, we took a guided tour of Lascaux too, an amazing modern replica of the main parts of the cave that is open to the public. Then it was time for the real thing. We walked up to the locked entrance gate where three Swedish journalists were also waiting. The man in charge of the cave, called the curator, took us into a meeting room to talk with us. He showed us bits of ochre, one of the pigments used by the ancient artist, and let us draw with it on rocks, as they had done. He described the methods used to monitor the condition of the cave to preserve its environment. If we had any questions, we should ask them now, he said, as we'd have only 35 minutes in the cave, and he wanted to show us whatever he could during that short time. One of the Swedes had visited ten, ten years before, and the curator asked him what he remembered. The Swede thought of a moment, then answered the impression. The curator nodded in understanding, and the rest of us wondered what he meant. We left the room and descended the concrete steps leading to the heavy metal doors that guard the cave. We entered through a series of doors like airlocks on a spaceship. Each time the curator urged us to move quickly to help keep out the outside air. We dipped the bottoms of our shoes in a disinfectant solution to help out to keep out unwanted pollen, algae, bacteria, and fungi. The air inside the earth felt cool on my skin. Finally, we climbed down into the darkness on a steep metal staircase. A faint flashlight showing the way into the ancient cave itself. A peaceful stillness surrounded us. Lighting the way with his flashlight, the curator took us through the dark cave into a side branch called the nave. 
which is not reproduced in Lascaux too. He used his flashlight to illuminate a beautiful horse pierced by a row of parallel arrow-like lines etched into the stone and showed us the mysterious signs and symbols that also marked the walls. Farther along the passageway, he aimed his light at a good-sized dark horse. Looking closely, I saw that the etched lines actually depicted at least three animals, a horse within a horse within a horse. The paint had flaked off from many of the many of the paintings, but the engraved outline still gave them a feeling of power and life. After lighting up a frieze of stag heads on the opposite wall, the curator pointed out the entrance to the shaft, a deep hole with a mystifying group of images hidden in the darkness. No one was allowed to enter there. Next, he led us into the Axel Gallery. He turned on the dim lighting and the cave came alive with vibrant paintings of horses and wild cattle, deer and ibex, wild goats. We saw the sweep of the of images all the way through the gallery to the other end, the famous Hall of the Bulls. One of the Swedes whispered excitingly, It's all one whole, can't you see? It's all the work of one artist. I know it. Just look. He was sure that this was the gallery of an ancient genius. I could see why he felt that way. The sense of unity was overwhelming. There were animals everywhere, brightly painted and alive, as if joyously created only yesterday. Thirty-five minutes passed very quickly, when time is precious. The curator had to stick to the, la to the highlights pointing out similarities and differences among the famous huge bulls on the wall, walls and ceiling. The last bull looked unfinished to me, and I asked if the people might have abandoned the cave before it was completed. The guide smiled and shook his head. Look, the artist didn't need to paint the rest, he said. It's there in the rock where the paint ends. I looked closely and saw that. Indeed, the rock took over outlining of the rest of the bull. The animals in the walls of the cave were one. Too soon we had to leave. It felt strange stepping out once again into the gently filtered afternoon sunlight of the woods into a world thousands of years in the future.